Parliament would make it easier, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. I'm Chairman. going to call Chris Hopkins. Well, he... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Mallard will have more to say as this, uh, as this debate. We're still in the early stages of the debate. I'm sure. I'm sure he will have other opportunities to have more to say. I want to talk about some of the supplementary order papers that I have put forward and explain uh, explain the rationale for some of those uh, supplementary order papers. Uh, and this is where we get into some of the guts and the technical details of the bill. So, if I run through them, perhaps I'll just run through the, the first of them in the order in which they are in. So, the first one, supplementary order paper 221, around requiring teachers to be qualified. I want to explain to the House what this will do. This will effectively mean that charter schools will be subject to the same requirements as every other school in the country when it comes to employing registered and qualified teachers. And I think the reason that it's important that the House understands that's the effect of the amendment is uh, members on this side of the House and around the House have talked about the importance of quality teaching and have talked about the risks of having people, even if they're qualified teachers, of not having unregistered qualified teachers. So they could still be qualified to be a teacher, but if they're not registered, there are huge risks involved in that. So what this SOP 221 would do is it would require uh, charter schools to, um, to make sure that the teachers are registered with the New Zealand Teachers Council. I was really heartened when I heard the comments from Dr Peter Sharples when he said that while they were supporting the charter schools legislation, they still expected that teachers would need to be qualified. Now that, and, and so I thought, well, this is great because they have an opportunity, the Māori Party have an opportunity to support this legislation and yet still ensure that teachers are appropriately registered and qualified. I hope that they will vote for this amendment. I understand they're not going to. I think that means that the things that Dr Peter Sharples has said about wanting to have qualified teachers in charter schools are incredibly hollow. The second supplementary order paper in my name, supplementary order paper 222, requires charter schools to teach to the New Zealand curriculum. Regard the New Zealand curriculum is recognised as incredibly flexible and enabling. Uh, it does provide schools huge scope for, for flexibility to do things in innovative and creative ways, but it ensures that all New Zealand students, all New Zealand children, will be given some basic grounding in a variety of subject areas that every, every child should have, every student in New Zealand should have. I'm really concerned uh, about the potential for charter schools to be used as a way to teach a particular ideological or religious perspective to the exclusion of others. So if we take the issue of science, for example, it is very possible that charter schools could teach creationism to the exclusion of basic scientific principles under this legislation. Now, schools can teach uh, religious instruction within existing legislation, uh, but there are some safeguards around that to ensure that students in state schools will still be taught science. And this legislation removes that for those students who are going to uh, charter schools. So supplementary order paper 222 ensures that every student attending a school in New Zealand will be taught the New Zealand curriculum, and charter schools should not be exempt from that. Supplementary order paper 223 extends the jurisdiction of the Official Information Act to charter schools. This is very important. The Ombudsman came to the Select Committee and made submissions arguing for this to be the case. So I think it's really important that the public of New Zealand understand where their money, because it is their taxpayers' money that is going to be going into these charter schools, they need to understand where it is being spent, how it is being spent. Supplementary Order Paper 223 will give that level of transparency and accountability, and I think that that is very, very important. Supplementary Order Paper number 224 will require charter schools to act in a manner that is subject to the principles of natural justice. And that is incredibly important. Public schools need to act in a way that is uh, subject to natural justice. Why shouldn't charter schools need to act in a way sub that is subject to natural justice? Supplementary Order Paper 226 is very important. That gives a lot priority to local students living within the area of a charter school. Because while the government say that these are going to be targeted to areas of disadvantage, and the schools will therefore be based in those areas, there is no requirement for them to actually enrol students who live in those areas. It is absolutely ridiculous, and it is completely contrary to all of the other uh, parts of our educational uh, infrastructure and the legislation around that. And I think that's very important. Uh, supplementary Order Paper 227 
requires a charter school to notify to the Ministry of Education if they are delegating any function or power that Mr Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair if they are delegating any function or power that they have to somebody else. That's really important because uh, under the current uh, arrangements as this legislation is presented, charter schools will have quite significant uh, power and uh, they're not going to have a lot of accountability for it if the government vote down the other amendments that I've talked about around the Official Information Act and so on. But it's important that people know who are the people making the decisions. So if a charter school proprietor or a sponsor, as they're called in this legislation, delegates to someone, say, outside of the charter school, power to make decisions under their contract, because it's all going to be governed by contract, not by legislation, if they delegate that to someone outside of the um, charter school, then the Secretary of Education should be advised so that, we can, so that the ultimate accountability uh, chain is maintained. Uh, that's really, really important. So that's what supplementary order paper number 227 will do. Supplementary order paper number 228 deals with an issue that's not related to charter schools, but it's related to the construction of early childhood facilities on Crown land. The amendments proposed in this legislation will allow a private property developer to establish an early childhood centre, say, on the corner of a public school site, own that centre, own the property around that, and lease it to an early childhood centre. So the middleman. So basically it inserts a middleman in it. It means that this person's only goal, really, is to build, and build the centre and make a profit for it. They're not the people who actually deliver the educational services. Their only job is to basically be a landlord, but they're using Crown land for it. They're making a profit out of the Crown land for that. So this SOP removes that. We already have a provision, plenty of provisions that allow early childhood centres, and including um, for-profit early childhood centres, to be built on uh, a primary school site, for example. But this goes further and it allows a middleman into the equation whose only objective is nothing to do with education, the only objective is for them to make a profit. That's wrong, and so the amendment that I've put forward, number 228, removes the ability uh, for them to do that. Amendment, um, there are a few other amendments, but I want to skip forward and go to amendment 240, supplementary order paper 240, which requires the minister to consult with local schools in considering a charter school application. The reason this is important is if a minute, the minister goes in and approves a charter school in a particular area, that is of course going to have an, imp uh, an impact on the other schools in that area. And we've got, a number of, we've, we've got a number of areas in New Zealand where we have educational over-provision. And the over-provision is what the Minister of Education is currently using as the rationale for closing schools down in Christchurch. And we've seen the evidence of that today. Clo shocking behaviour, school closures in Christchurch. I think before the Minister adds more schools to an area where there's already over-provision, she should have to consult with the schools who are going to be affected, because otherwise what we're going to see is the Minister of Education approving the establishment of charter schools in an area and then going and closing down the local state schools there. Closing down the local state schools, removing the power of those boards of trustees who currently run the schools on behalf of their communities, and they won't be able to do anything about it. I think she should at least, or he or she, should at least have to front up to those communities and explain why they are making that decision. And that's exactly what supplementary order paper number 240 would do. Supplementary order paper 241 will allow the Secretary of Education to take over the management if there is a serious problem within the school. At the moment, even if the Secretary of Education is aware that there is a major problem with a charter school, unless it actually qualifies for a very high threshold of being an emergency, the Secretary of Education doesn't have the power to intervene. These, are, these schools will be entrusted with student safety, well-being, welfare. They're going to have unregistered teachers, and yet even if the Secretary of Education becomes aware that there are major problems with the school, they won't have the power to intervene. So supplementary order paper 241, very important supplementary order paper, provides the Secretary of Education the power to intervene. And I want to hear from any member of the government any member of the government, why they think that's a bad idea. If they are so confident that these charter schools are going to be so good, why is it that they're removing the ability to intervene when they fail? Why is it that they're not going to have any accountability and they're going to vote against the accountability mechanisms in this legislation? Because if these schools fail, the consequences for the students who go to them will be serious and therefore ensuring that failure can be addressed swiftly promptly 
and any issues can be properly dealt with is very, very important. So I want to hear from one member of the government why they're going to vote against this amendment if that's in fact what they're going to do. I'm going to call um, uh, Tracy Martin. I just want to pick up on um, just a further.